was uh, life going from the oceans to land. Uh, there was uh, mammals, uh, consciousness. The goal of SpaceX um, is, um, and I would argue also, perhaps not a very commercial sounding goal at all, which is it's to really build the technologies necessary to make life multiplanetary. Since the project was announced in 2015, SpaceX has launched 1,100 Starlink satellites into orbit to provide global, high speed internet. Elon Musk has a specific purpose for this constellation of satellites, to connect the most remote areas of the world to the internet, as well as to compete with large providers in urban areas. There is enormous opportunity in this market, as there are many limitations to connecting rural areas to the internet, leaving much of the world's population still offline. Despite seemingly everything taking place on the internet, only 63% of the world's population is connected with most of the usage coming from developed countries. Remote areas and developing countries often do not have the ground infrastructure built to provide traditional internet services. Telecommunications companies are hesitant to serve these markets, as there usually aren't enough customers to cover the costs of the expensive and difficult process of installing cables in rough terrains or harsh environments. With Starlink's giant network, it will be able to pass these restraints and serve markets that would otherwise be ignored. SpaceX will be able to capture a large portion of the massive telecommunications industry and help fund its greater plans of Mars colonization. But the revenue potential of launching, rocket, launching satellites, servicing the space station and whatnot, that you know, taps out around $3 billion a year. Um, but I think uh, providing broadband is, is more like an order of magnitude more than that, probably 30 billion a year. But this is an expensive industry to get into and is even harder to make a successful business out of it as history has shown. Most of the previous satellite internet companies went bankrupt, largely because of the costs required to launch rockets. But SpaceX has already done most of the heavy lifting through its perfection of its reusable rocket manufacturing and launches. It applies the same engineering innovations to Starlink satellites, enabling it to produce and deploy over 180 satellites each month. This rate of production is critical as SpaceX has been approved by the Federal Communications Commission to launch 12,000 of them over the next few years. But the company is also planning to launch an additional 30,000 over the next decade which combined is five times the number of all spacecraft humans have ever launched. After production, the 500 pound satellites are loaded onto a rocket. The Falcon 9 is the usual vehicle for them as it has deployed all of the Starlink satellites currently in orbit, carrying 60 each launch. As of February 2021, the F9 has completed 20 trips, deploying over 1,000 satellites into orbit. The company's much bigger, Starship, is still in development, but is planned to deploy 400 satellites each trip, allowing the company to easily complete its worldwide network. The satellites are deployed in low Earth orbit, as the closer they are to Earth, the faster the signals will be. It also helps ensure the satellites will fall out of orbit and back to Earth in less time in case of failure. Once they are in orbit, they beam signals back to the ground, communicating with the user terminals customers install themselves. With a network of over a thousand satellites, which will soon grow to tens of thousands, large amounts of information can be stored and communicated to any point on Earth in the blink of an eye, competing with the speed of traditional cable connections. Even though it's still in its beta testing phase, Starlink has already achieved this with its customer base of over 10,000. Customers are receiving download speeds of 50 to 150 megabits per second on average, with some even receiving over 200, as well as 20 to 40 millisecond latency speeds, both standards to be considered competitive in the industry, but with a price point slightly higher and speeds slightly slower than existing telecommunications companies, Starlink will have difficulty competing in dense urban areas. However, the goal of Starlink is to instead serve remote areas that are too costly for telecom companies to enter. What makes Starlink so powerful is that these remote areas getting internet for the first time will be going from terrible connections to extremely fast connections instantly. And since the Starlink network will be so wide, this will happen on a global scale. One of Starlink's first customers went from a 3 megabits per second connection to 130 overnight, completely changing how they lived their lives. 
The 3,000 person community in Northwestern Ontario can now access healthcare services, education, and businesses online. All of this was done at a nearly identical price to a traditional telecom company that would have never been able to justify the cost of serving that region. Other communities, as well as enthusiasts, have also gotten their hands on Starlink, proving that it works at scale and will be able to quickly expand to the rest of the world. But SpaceX and Starlink are not alone, as other companies have noticed the potential of this market as well. Amazon is one of them, which plans to launch thousands of satellites for its Kuiper Internet project. Similar to SpaceX, Amazon announced it would spend $10 billion to execute this project by deploying over 3,000 satellites to serve the tens of millions who lack access to broadband internet. OneWeb is another potential competitor, which was recently resurrected from bankruptcy by a $1 billion investment from the British government. This company has secured contracts from major telephone companies and has successfully deployed over 100 satellites. However, SpaceX is still years ahead in terms of technology and capturing the consumer market. Other countries have begun pouring money into satellite constellations following Starlink's lead, displaying a shift away from the telecom companies. In the past, governments covered the losses of telecom companies by paying them to service rural areas so that more people could have basic internet access. Now that satellite internet can efficiently serve these markets, a portion of the money that would otherwise be spent on telecoms will now go to companies like SpaceX. SpaceX also has the advantage of being one of the first to get set up in this industry and the regulations that come with it. One of the biggest barriers to enter this market, aside from the billions of dollars, are the requirements needed to meet FCC regulations for satellite communications. Amazon, having the resources to do a similar thing SpaceX is doing, is struggling to get approval from the FCC, even asking it to waive certain requirements to accelerate the company's progress. SpaceX and OneWeb, however, already met these requirements, and having Amazon enter so easily would hurt their business. In a strict business involving tens of thousands of new objects entering space, fighting for regulator approval is a big part of the battle, and a new company coming into the market not only takes away business, but also makes their operations more complicated, as they have to adjust software to account for the thousands of new objects, greatly increasing the complexity. But being the leader in this industry also comes with a lot of responsibility for SpaceX. The act of placing thousands of satellites into orbit creates a high risk for space debris. A satellite collision could cause a chain reaction and send thousands of tiny parts speeding to damage other spacecraft. SpaceX is prepared for this though, as each satellite is equipped with technology that detects and moves the satellite out of the way of any incoming debris that could damage it. But sometimes satellites fail and go offline, unable to be controlled by SpaceX. This is part of the reason why the satellites are deployed at such a low orbit of 340 miles. If SpaceX loses all communication with a satellite, it will naturally deorbit after a few years, removing any risk of collision. For the future, SpaceX is planning to launch batches of 60 satellites every two to three weeks to quickly reach the different phases of its Starlink network. To reach the complete network of over 40,000 will depend on how fast regulatory approval takes to connect different regions around the world and on the development of new spacecraft. SpaceX has made incredible progress over the past five years with this project and they seem to be on track to achieve this, connecting the entire world to the internet in the process.